What is up, world? You are in tune to the Texas Fight Podcast, FFSN, here on the FFSN Network, Horns and Sun. Listen, we just witnessed the 34 to 30. Uh, you know, we lost the Red River robbery. I'm a little agitated. I'm, I'm a little agitated only because of the simple fact that, you know, it, Pete, you guys out there in Longhorn land love Pete. Y'all swear by Pete. I can't even say his last name. And that's another thing that really gets me going. Um, but I, I'm just going to tell you, Pete called a horrible game. We got out coach. Want to know why? Because pressure busts a pipe. What did they do to Quinn all game long? They pressured him. They got pressure on him, made him move off his spot. Then, you know, of course, we, we, were in, we started hitting some passes. But that's what good quarterbacks do, right? Pete, the whole game played coverage. The whole game played coverage. And you let Dylan Gabriel sit back in the pocket and do what he's going to do to you. It's called pride. P-R-I-D-E. Right? You think Trevondre Sweat and, and everybody else are going to hit home. Every You think Baron Sorrell is going to get home. You, you think a true sophomore on the outside is going to get home. They didn't. It's a decent uh, uh, Oklahoma offensive line. Pride. The only thing they could have beat Texas, beat Texas. Pete, pride. He did not game plan for this game. He ran a bland coverage the whole game. Well, you could say uh, anything else other than I got more, but I'm going to let Sensei get his, uh, get his off. Sensei, talk to me, man, because, I mean, I got a lot to say, and it's, it, a lot of it's going to be directed towards Pete and, and Jalen Ford, but go ahead. That's interesting. That's interesting. Because um, I don't I – re I respect where you're coming from. I do. But I don't know that I hang this on Pete. Be honest with you. A lot of my frustration, and I am, I, I'm very frustrated by this team. I was very frustrated by this team in the third quarter when 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 uh it was 17 to 27 and and they scored again. I was like, that's it. That's it. Let me let me ask. I'm I'm not sure that it's on Pete. I think this is the team. I, I, I put some some blame on them, put some blame on the team, and I put some blame on Sark. Is I, I think it's the the head man, but I, I want I'm I'm interested in why you feel like Pete is the is the guy here. Why he was the first person out of your mouth, Pete Kukowski. The, the whole game since like the whole game when when he brought pressure when he brought pressure, we ended up getting the, to Gabriel moving him off his spots. Or he ended up throwing a couple of passes that were erratic. One that should have been uh, uh, intercepted by, you know, the guy who gave up the end touchdown. You know, who, who's good for one. He's good for one every game. Uh, Thompson is good for giving up one every game. Just definitely good. Catalan's gone with an injury. But listen, what what, what I saw out of Pete's defense is more of what I see out of Pete's defense this year. He sits back in shell coverage. He does not bring blitzes. He doesn't uh, even simulate blitzes by coming, making making Dylan think I'm coming and then back off in the zone coverage. He wasn't doing that. You've got to send somebody from up the middle all the time on a scrambling quarterback. Why? You get him off his spots and you make your ends play contained. That's why. Pete did none of the such. He just said, uh, we're going to play shell coverage. We're going to make him beat us from the pocket. And that's what he did. He got it all day long. All you heard was the announcer saying, Gabriel has all day to throw the ball. Gabriel has all day to throw the ball. Come on, Pete. Dial up some. And in that span where we got back, we, the span where you were talking about 27-17, and that span where we caught up and we got him off the field in, in four and six plays, three, three plays here, six plays the next drive, what did we do? We blitzed. We applied pressure. Pressure's going to bust a pipe or it's going to make a diamond. We didn't allow it to make a diamond with Dylan Gabe. We just here's, gave him the game. Here's why I say I don't I don't hang this one on Pete. I think he was sending blitzes. I think he was sending blitzes the whole game, except for that final sequence where they scored the touchdown. He's not sending blitzes. Everybody's hanging in coverage. And that I'll, wear, I'll, I'll put on him. They're just not getting there. They're just not getting there. They're, the reason there's no pressure on them is, is when they get there, he's running out of the pocket and they are not getting there. You, talk, you want to talk about pride. Correct my memory. 
Is this in the second or third quarter where they're at the one? Jonathan Brooks has got them to the no. Was it Jonathan Brooks? I think it was Jonathan Brooks has got them to the one, or maybe it was Xavier Worthy. Somebody no. got them to the one. Jordan Winnington. Jordan Winnington got them to the one. What quarter is that? Third quarter. That's the third. Okay. You want to talk about pride? Sark called the right place. Called the right place. You need one yard. A cloud of dust and 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 th- one yard and a cloud of dust. However, you want to go. We need you got the big bodies in there and you call it three times. I was beating my chest saying run it again. Me. I was saying run it again. We they cannot play. stop us. We need one yard. That's the players. That's the players. Couldn't get in the end zone three times. Three times. Xavier Worthy could not get one yard. Your well, best player. No. So since I when you when you think about that's the that players. Point, that's not that's not no. Sark. When you think about that from a player's perspective, and you you, you say, yeah, it's want to. That's the first thing. So I'll hang it on want to. The other thing is, is that if I know what's coming at me from a defensive side, I can now bow my back and say, you're not gonna beat. Right? So the first play with the beef, you go, you don't get it. You know what you do that second play? Stay in the same formation. We're gonna beat you again. Yeah, you say the same formation. That's that's what I was saying. But no, we're gonna. Here's the twist: same mm-hmm. formation, naked bootleg. Quinn's wide open. He scores. I mean, wide open. I mean, wide open. You can't. Yeah, man. Here's the. Here's why I'm saying. And 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 okay, I'm a, I'm gonna give this to Sark and the players on that one. But this is why I'm saying this because it's pride for you to think, and, and you're arrogant to think that we. We just got better talent. Man on man, we're going to beat you because we have better talent. They do have better talent. It doesn't matter. I have to disagree with you on this one. It doesn't matter. if, From a player's perspective, Sensei, Mm -hmm. it's called pride on both sides. I got pride, and you're not going to just run the ball down my throat. You're just not going to little man me. You're not just going to right on the head. They they ended up being right. right. However, however, I, 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 I have, I'm going to have to disagree because we put that bootleg on film for ba- with Baylor. So I, I do believe that they would have been prepared for it, just like they were prepared for that little turnaround pass that Quinn like that Steve likes to call. Right. But honestly, it's one yard. It comes down to want to on both sides. Obviously, the Sooners wanted it, wanted to stop you more than you wanted to get an end zone. End of story. End of story. I agree. I agree. I, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm not disagreeing with that. That's hard and that's want to. And you should, you, I mean, Xavier Worthy almost got into the end zone by himself and he caught the ball three yards, three yards back, right? And, and but that's that's my point. Yeah, you're, you're already, I, Pete bears uh, uh, 50% of this blame, Sark bears the other 50 to me. We got out coached. Period point blank. I hate to say it, bread, bread uh, 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 vegetables out coached Sark. He did. He's a good coach. He's he outcoached Sark. He outcoached him. Some, you know I'm what I'm saying? I'm going to read some of my notes and, and from this game. Pete, Pete got right. outcoached like it was nobody's business. He was doing stuff to Pete and had the defense over there looking at sidelines like, I don't know what we're doing. This is something that if you game plan, Sensei, you got this in the game plan. What they're going to, if you recognize what a team's going to try to do to you, then you make that a weakness, Right? This mm-hmm. team is going to try to go warp speed on us. You know what we're going to do to take that away? We're going to send men from everywhere. He's going to think men are coming up out the ground. You know what I'm saying? He's going to need to put him behind think, the sticks. Huh? We need to put him behind it. We need to put That's him behind right. the sticks. He's think men are coming up out the ground. He's going to think men are being warped in to tackle him. If I'm the defensive coordinator, I'm sending people from places he doesn't even expect. He's going to think they're even crawling out of his underwear. I'm telling you, that's what you have to do to beat a team who wants to take you fast, right? I, I, I can respect that position. I can respect that position. I just, I think I'm, I'm going to go through some of my notes and I, I'm going to lay out a little bit of what I, where I'm go coming ahead, man, from and why my me. frustration is with the, the top man. Steve said last week after they beat Kansas, they asked him something about stats, right? About stats. And we have known that this team has some deficiencies the whole time, right? 
it's, it, or if they're not deficiencies, if we didn't think there were deficiencies, we were just like, hey, man, it's odd that we can't beat Kansas in the from the third first to the third quarter. It's odd that Wyoming's still in this game at halftime. That's odd, right? It's odd that we didn't kill Rice, right? That's odd, right? Oh, number three in the nation. So good. Okay, cool. I guess I guess we're buying into the hype now. We're doing it. Natties. We're going to, to, to the college football playoffs. And here's the thing. When you went into this game, you had your destiny in your hands. And every time that Texas has their destiny in somebody else's hands, guess what? It doesn't work out for us. You need to keep your destiny in your own hands. That's what this game was about. Proving that you're the number three team in the nation. You win this game. That's what the number three team in the nation does. You win this game. Oklahoma did not have the Jimmys and Joes this year. They just didn't. That's why when you're at the one yard line and you run the ball three times, that is the right call with, with those big backers in the backfield, with those defensive linemen in the backfield. That's the right call. It didn't work because y'all didn't want it enough. But okay, okay. So Sark talks about stats, right? He says, uh, somebody asked him like, hey, these stats are not in your favor, right? S Steve says, an old friend of mine said something, uh, stats are something like, I'm sorry, let me start over. An old friend of mine said, stats are like something. Once you get them, you can do anything with them. I don't really care about stats. We keep winning. We've uh, got to continue to execute better when we're down there. Oh, this is the red zone. Okay, when we're down there, I try not to get up to get caught up in what the stats say. Okay, let's just take it. It is it's the red zone. How how uh, applicable to the situation that we're talking about? But let's just take the red zone out of it. Let's just talk about stats for a second. How do you win football games, Dad? What what stats are important for you winning football games? Oh, you're muted. You're muted. You 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 have to you have to score you have to score points, and to you score, have to score points, points okay to score points you got to collect offensive yards, right? Okay, so okay. So offensive yards, real quick. Offensive yards. We know that this game, right? This game in particular is won by the team who has the most rushing yards. Okay, let's just let's just take a little gander at the rushing yards. Okay, uh, real quick. So the overview of the rushing yards we had one fifty six. Oh look at that! They had two oh one. Okay, cool. So you didn't you didn't get the most rushing yards in the game. We know that this game specifically depends a lot on the rushing yards. Okay, well we didn't do that. What else didn't we do? Or or let's just take a look at the rest of the stats, right? Did you win the turnover battle? So yeah, so did not. No, no, but but I'm I'm asking, is, is turnovers important to, to, to winning a football game? Turnovers are important. Okay, so so how many turnovers did did we have? Uh, in, in this game, I know I know Quinn threw two touchdown, uh, two interceptions, and one fumble. Is that it? Is that is that all the turnovers in this game? Yeah, that was all. Okay. The turnovers. Let's see. Did oh did oh you have any turnovers in this game? They did not have a turnover in this game. Okay, so now you're telling me that two of the most important stats in this game are going to Oklahoma. Is that what you're saying right now? Okay, Absolutely. stats don't matter though. Oh, you can make them say whatever. Okay, what about sacks? What about what about any of the sacks? In this game, okay. Did you get? Did you? Who won the stat? Who won the sacks? Uh, uh, who who won the sack? The defensive defensive stats they, are not out. They there sacked right us now. more, they, but they, they sacked, sacked us them. more. Yeah, we were there. Totally. We we we, we saw. Only got, we only got home to Gabriel once. Okay, so let's let's. They won sack, sacks too. Let's let's look at let's look at penalties. Who won the penalties? Uh, at one point, we were outpacing them seven to three. I don't see it at this very moment in time, but let's assume that they won the penalties, right? So you're telling me that no, they, they did us in every. We were penalized nine times for seventy yards. They were only penalized four times for thirty yards. So you're telling you're telling me that they they beat us in every single important stat in this game? Okay. So did we deserve to win this game? We did not. Clearly, we're more talented. We turned the ball over three times in this game. We had a defensive touchdown in this game, a blocked punt, and a, D or a special teams touchdown. Shout out to Malik we, Muhammad. We did not. Outside of that, offense plays slow, right? We we played undisciplined. We played sloppy. 
we did not deserve to win this game. The only reason we were in it is because we're more talented. And hats off to Burnt Vegetables. He is a good coach. I did not know if he was a good coach until this game. He is a good coach. Unfortunately, we had a coach that was not better than him today. Honestly, that's that's what it was. They were more prepared for us. They played more discipline. They turned the ball over. They could... One of the other things that Quinn that Steve said was why Quinn was was starting slow is because they were doing things. He was seeing looks that he wasn't prepared for. And last week on Burn Orange Boys, I said, "Yo, you can only do what you're prepared for." I understand you're preparing what you're preparing so, so, for, and then you get out there. But How here's the you... thing. Hold on, wait I'm almost minute. done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. No, but I gotta here's ask a question on that. On that. If you're seeing looks you haven't, whose job is it to prepare him? Exactly. Exactly. Brent Venables was more prepared coach today, prepared his team better. I don't know that I, PK had 34 hung on him today. Listen, that's not a good look. But I think it stops, the buck stops with Sark. This is, this is the players let Sark down and the buck stops on you getting them prepared. If you score in the third quarter, we win this game 37 to 34. We needed, we shouldn't have needed a touchdown at that point. At the at the point where we needed the touchdown at the end of the game, we shouldn't have needed it. We've left points on the on the field in every game we've played. Every game. Every game. And the number three team in the nation doesn't do that. Doesn't do it. And you know, since I you you make great points. You make great points yet again, man. Yet again. And and listen, you you you've gotten a lot of my frustration, and I apologize. Okay. I apologize. <laughs> I'm, I'm super, I get it, man. I'm super frustrated with the fact that we're going to the SEC where every game is uh it matters. You can't drop a game. You can't, you know, and, and uh, true enough. We were, we came into all, me and you both said we lose, you know, between two and three games, right? That that was yep. our beginning, right? Mm -hmm. and, but, but we had undefeated looking us in the face. We, we had it looking Five and us. Five for the first time since 2008. Right. Had it looking us in the face. And I think, you know, he started, he started buying into his own press. Him and PK do not game plan at all. And they finally got a set of coaches who game plan for they behind and said, you know what? Y'all not beating us on the stuff that y'all are really good at. you are not going to do it. Listen, Jonathan Brooks took, got another hundred yard game, right? Got another hundred yard really, game. Side note, we're really good at wasting running backs big games. We are so good at that. We're, we're great at it. Here's, here's the deal. What I told you that they can't do. What I, I told you offensively, we can't come into the game doing this one thing, and that's passing sideways. What's the first thing we did on the first couple of plays? Pass, Pass sideways. sideways. I said, we've got to establish the running game. We cannot sit up in here and try to play around. Boy, what? boy, he loved running on first down. If you're going to run on first down, be creative, please. Stop just and stop just letting Jonathan Brooks take sh body shots in the backfield for no reason. Right, right. It just it doesn't make sense. And then you know the creative little pitch that he did for what? We don't need to go sideways. So we went. We took two three and outs, two three and outs, and we gave them the momentum. And and I'm gonna tell you something. In that stadium, momentum means everything. Let me say it again. Cause you gotta, you gotta get this. In the Red River robbery, momentum means everything. It means everything. There's no if you lose the momentum in that game, the game is over. They outrushed us 201 yards to our 150 something. Right here's here's the deal. Quinn at times was trying to be too cute trying to force passes that he knew he shouldn't have uh, forced. He, he, he know he shouldn't have do it because he double clutched it. Why do you double clutch? Because you're not sure you should let it go, right? Sark, no, I'm going to put that on Quinn again. I'm going to put yeah. that on Quinn, uh, on Sark again because I was about to attitude say, reflects leadership. Again, Sark, you, the problem here, Sark, is you are too arrogant. 
and you think your your players can just show up on a Saturday and beat a team that has been prepping for you all week. They see that I number three. I said on three. the Burn Orange Boys. I said on the Burn Orange Boys. They they didn't have an Alabama on this on their schedule. Their season started today. They were prepping, just like you said. They were prepping for you the whole off season. Right, right. And they 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 got stuff on film. They saw it. They knew what they could take event. And look, the few times I'm finna show you the few times that uh, Sark went to to his little green notebook from the water boy. Uh, you had a tight end running wide open. Everybody, the few times that you game plan, you win. disappointed man that you can't you can't continue to leave points on the field and think you're going to be fine it just doesn't work that way especially when you play another prepared good team they were they're not even a great team this is a team that you have more talent than a team you should have beat three turnovers less rushing yards more penalties and And, I'm and, and, and not enough want to you, I'm going to tell you, Quinn had 300 some odd yards. Uh, Xavier Worthy had 100. Uh, Winnington had 100. But coach is both of their cornerbacks got hurt, right? Both of their cornerbacks got hurt. Yep. You know what coaching says? Test them new corners. Test them new corners. You test them. You test them. And I got a, you got a safety out here playing cornerback. And I got one of the fastest players in the, in America. <laughs> and one of the let fastest me, players in America. Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you something. Let me tell I'm going to tell you part two of a story I've already told. Remember I said Steve's game plans, the way that his games play out are like how I used to play my grades, making miracles happen at the last second. Let's part two that story. Sometimes miracles didn't happen at the last second, and I would just have to eat defeat. And guess what the Longhorns did today? One of the things I said in my notes, one of, my, one of the things I said in my notes was, the, where's it at? Anthony Hill is not a loser. I want to start there. Anthony Hill, bravo, young man. You did a great job. Y'all learned how to lose today. Today, y'all learned how to lose. This is how this is how you create losing cultures. By things like this. Learn you can you can learn how to win like you did at Alabama. You can also learn how to lose. And they learned. I'm not saying it's it's gonna continue to go forward, but today they learned some things that may transfer forward to some other performances. There's a long bye week coming. Could have been happy. Could have been a great bye week. Two touchdowns, less or two interceptions, less want to. And uh and and just just being arrogant, lost the game. Yeah, and and sensei, I, I this is a reaction show. And and I'm I'm done after this. I'm i really am. I'm done. Uh, you you prior preparation will give you future success, right? Mm-hmm. But when you don't prepare, you better prepare to lose. You, this is Steve. Steve, you're out here, and I know you're listening. The problem is you, you, you're you too uh, in love with what you draw up and the schemes you make. You're too in love with your uh, approach towards the game. You don't game plan to beat a team. You're over here scheming against dummies and thinking that the dummy plans are going to work in real life. They're not. You can't just draw up, hey, run to the car, run to the fire post, run to uh, uh, the light post and and turn in and you're going to be open. That doesn't happen. When we're playing major college athletics, you scheme the team. You scheme up something that is going to take advantage 
of the other team's weakness. You didn't do that offensively. Pete, you didn't do it defensively. You didn't, you did not pay attention to the fact that if you send somebody up the middle with your ends and Travondre Sweat pushing and your ends crashing, you give him no place to run. He's going to set it down. And those batted balls that he got a lot of when the white got him, because you finally got it right. The things that I was telling you to do, you're going to get pushed up the middle. Your ends are going to crash and you send an extra man. He'll throw it because he's so small. The ball will get knocked down. I don't have, why is it? Everybody says, you know, arm, armchair quarterback, you know, rocking chair coach. It's easy to see. Listen, I'm not getting paid millions of dollars like you are, Pete, to do what you're supposed to do, Pete. It doesn't make sense, Pete, that you could just sit up, Pete, and watch a team throw and dink and dunk you, Pete, without bringing pressure. We all know that pressure breaks a pipe or it makes a diamond. But you didn't even give Dylan Gabriel a chance to even see if he was a diamond. You just allowed him to do whatever the heck he wanted to do. I'm sick and tired. I'm done after this. I'm sick and tired of Sark and Pete not game planning for teams and we get out coach. I'm tired of it. Something has to change. Hey, shout out Dylan Gabriel, Sooner legend today. We, we made him that. We made him a Sooner legend today. Uh, uh, I got a question to ask you, Dad. We're going we're gonna to flip to the other side now. Queen yours. You're muted. Queen yours. Better than better than uh, Shane Bouchelle? Yes. It's a toss-up for me. You know why it's a toss-up for me? Because Shane won more. I'm sorry. Not Shane Bouchelle. Sam Ellinger. Oh, no. Sam, Sam won more. Sounds better. See? Yeah. You were supposed to be a first-round quarterback, sir. You knew that this team, or you should have known, that this team was first in the Big 12 on takeaways. Should have known. Three three of them you were responsible for today. You got to wear that. Got to wear it. Sorry, bro. Shout out Sooner legend, Dylan, Dylan Gabriel. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm disgusted. And we've been saying, we have not, listen, we, we got away. We've got away five times. Oh, we got away. I, I, I wanted to bring this up. If you wanted to make this a Savion Red game, why not use that package in any other place than third and, and short? Like if, if it's killing them, and it obviously is, you were saving that for this game, obviously. You saved the pass for this game. I've, bro. You, if you need, we're struggling in the run game. If you want to give it to Cedric Baxter that bad, do it in that package. Just give them a different look. Stop running it. If you're going to run it on first down every time, do something different. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. We don't want to. We don't want to win the cutest plays uh, award. It's it's great. I love having great design plays. I would much rather watch this ber- version of football than Charlie Strong's version of football, but we need to win. So if it's at the cost of your cuteness, let it go, man. Let it go. Yeah, I, I can't. I don't, I don't know what else to say, except that, you know, rest of, of Longhorn Nation, um, you know, we need to get a message through to Sark that it it's over with with you playing cute and winning cute. Um, you're gonna Clearly have to this establish. This is unacceptable, man. I was trying to think you're gonna we have gonna, to game plan this episode from here on out. You're gonna have to take everybody seriously, game plan against teams from here on out. Not try to win games with mano y mano, man on man, because that that doesn't work. A, a better coach can take. A uh, uh, lesser talent and beat you. You saw that today. B- yeah. A better, a better coach took lesser, lesser talent and beat you. And and Add I hope- to the to the list of coaches who who that has happened, uh, who Steve has went against, and they've taken lesser talent and and done that. Coaches like Mike Gundy. Add, just add uh, coaches like Sonny Dykes. Coaches like uh, 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 
who uh, Chris Kleiman. Uh, add, go ahead and add Brent Burnt Vegetables to that list. I was trying to think what we were going to name this podcast, but really, this is an un- unacceptable loss. Like, rival or not, this is an unacceptable loss. You cannot go out there, turn the ball three over three times, losing every important stat, and think we're going to eat that. This is unacceptable. Stats matter now. They, they, they didn't matter before. You were right <laughs> to say that at the, at the time. But guess what? As soon as 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 soon as Farouk caught the ball in the end zone, I don't know if it was Farouk, but as soon as the 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 sooner receiver caught the ball in the end zone, when we were rushing Dylan Gabriel to score the final touchdown, stats matter now. They didn't. Yeah. They matter now. They should. They should have mattered before. Hook them. 